Good morning, afternoon, evening, night, whenever you're watching this, welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we are going to be talking about different theories of emotion as we review Unit 7, Topic 3 of AP Psychology. By now I'm sure that we all know what emotions are. We know what it's like to be fearful, angry, sad, stressed, loved, anxious, and happy. But how does thinking and our biological response to different situations impact our actions and emotions? William James believed that we simply react to our different emotions. For example, we cheer when we are excited and we cry when we're sad. Our emotions here come from us reacting to our bodily activities. Carl Lang later proposed the James Lang theory, which is the theory that our experience of emotion is our physiological response to a stimulus. Essentially, we experience an event or a stimulus that causes our nervous system and body to be alerted or aroused. And this causes us to experience emotion. Our emotions are a reaction to our bodily response to the stimulus. Walter Cannon and Philip Barr disagreed with James and Lang, and they created the Cannon Bard theory, which believed that our body's response to a stimulus and our emotions were separate but happened simultaneously. We experience a physiological response and an emotional response roughly at the same time. For example, when you get jump scared, your sympathetic nervous system causes your heart to start pounding, and at the same time, the information is sent to your brain, causing you to be aware of your fear. Notice here that the heart pounding did not cause the feeling of fear. Stanley Schachter and Jerome Singer looked into how we interpret our experiences and how that impacts our emotions. We can see this illustrated in the Schachter two-factor theory, which states that emotions occur from both physical and cognitive awareness to a stimulus. For example, if you hear a bear roar while hiking, that would be the stimulus, which would cause your heart to start pounding and your body to react. You would then use your cognitive appraisal to process the bear's roar and determine that you probably should be afraid and run. This would be the emotional experience that you experience. On the other hand, Joseph Ledoux believed that our emotions can sometimes take a direct path to the amygdala and skip our cortex. This would cause us to have an immediate emotional response without us being able to immediately be aware of what was happening. This idea was further researched by Richard Lazarus, who found that our brain is constantly processing information that we're not consciously aware of. Lazarus came up with the appraisal theory, which states that when we encounter a stimuli, an event, or an experience, we will appraise or assess the situation and come to a conclusion that the stimuli, experience, or event is either harmless or dangerous. This process can happen without us being immediately aware of it. For example, if you're sitting in your living room and you hear a loud sound, you'll immediately start going through different possibilities of what that sound could be. And you might start to panic. You might come to the conclusion that someone else may be in the house with you. Or you may come to the conclusion that your dog or cat just tipped something over and there's no need to worry. Your body may react differently based on what you think is happening around you. Another way in which we can look at emotions is with individuals' facial reactions. We can see that emotions and many emotional reactions can be identified by people around the world. Paul Ekman believed that certain emotions are innate and can be understood by different cultures. In his research, Ekman showed pictures of people with different emotional reactions to people around the world. What was discovered is that emotions such as happiness, fear, surprise, sadness, or anger could be identified by participants around the world. This showed that certain emotional facial expressions and reactions are not learned. They're naturally occurring in the body. Speaking of facial expressions, have you ever heard of the saying, fake it till you make it? Well, there actually might be some science behind that. It was studied that when we make certain faces, such as when we smile, it sends information to the brain. The brain then interprets that information and shifts our mood. For example, if you're smiling, even if you're not really happy, the brain receives the information from your facial muscle movements and elevates your mood. This is known as the facial feedback hypothesis. We can also see that when you are seen by others, when you are smiling, grimacing, or looking angry, they're more likely to respond with similar facial expressions, which again sends information to the brain that can impact your own mood. Lastly, we can see how culture influences how emotions are expressed and shown. For example, in the United States, making the OK symbol with your thumb and index finger is a signal that you are OK. But if you made that signal in Brazil, it's essentially giving someone the middle finger in the United States. Or if you were to give someone a thumbs up in many European countries or in the United States, it's seen as a sign of approval. But if you gave someone a thumbs up in many Islamic countries, it's considered a major insult. In some countries, it's essentially saying, up your. In these two examples, we can see that hand gestures can be used to convey different emotions, but they're not universal. Depending on your culture and where you're from, you'll be interpreting them differently. Remember though, certain facial expressions are universal. For example, a smile is a smile around the world. When looking at different
different cultures around the world and their emotional expressions, we can see that the difference in facial expressions is to the degree in which individuals display them. For example, in some countries, it's common for people to show their teeth while smiling, while in others it's not. All right, now comes the time to practice what we have learned. Answer the questions on the screen and check your answers in the comment section down below. As always, if you found value in this video, consider subscribing and check out my ultimate review packet. It definitely will help you get an A in your class and a five on that national exam. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Mr. Sin, and I'll see you next time online.